So welcome everyone to this IFLA webinar that's going to launch the results of the Regional Advocacy Priority Study. This is an exercise we carried out in the middle of last year, so the Northern Hemisphere summer, Southern Hemisphere winter. And the whole idea was to give us a better idea of where our members, where the library field is focused on advocacy, both in terms of the institutions you're trying to support, the type of libraries, sorts of policy areas that you're really focusing on, and the activities that are being carried out. And the idea of this was to give us a much better idea of where you are now so that we can plan, but importantly also that if there's new regional structures, regional division committees can plan. So my name is Stephen Weiber. I'm Director for Policy and Advocacy, and I'm part of a team that works on a number of different advocacy issues around copyright, around sustainable development, around human rights, governance, cultural heritage, cultural diversity, and building skills in general. But what I want to do now is hand over to my colleague, Sfina Goasimidu, who is going to talk to us about the results of that study. So over to you, Sfina. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, hello, everybody. It's really nice to, um, to see you here. I am Despina Yersimidu. I'm if the Strategic Development Officer, and currently my main work focus is the uh, new regional IFLA regional division committees and their work across the world, so across the regions. So as you might know, IFLA now has new, new uh, six regional divisions. Um, and here is the main web, website of them. And as you see, there is one for Asia, Oceania, Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean, um, Middle East and North Africa, North America and Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, each of those has an, ac an acronym actually, which I'm gonna use uh, later in my presentation. Um, so um, just to give you a bit of insight, um, each of those regional divisions um, has uh, really already taken up their sleeves and they're hard at work developing their action plans. And they will soon actually come out with really impressive uh, planning and work products focused on each region. Um, so and this is actually why we did the study so uh, that we're presenting to you today. So we mainly uh, began this to help the new regional division committees get an idea of where current advocacy efforts focus on a global and on a regional level. Um, so to start conversations uh, within the regional division committees. And um, um, so at this point, it's also important to highlight that this, what I will present to you today, is this data is not comprehensive. It's not a definitive set of priorities. It's more of a discussion starter. Um, so another aim of the, of the study was to inspire the actions that respond to the field's regional advocacy needs. Um, so this study, as I said, really informed the development of the action plans of each regional division committee. Um, also just to say that these action plans will be soon published on IFLA's website, so stay tuned. So I'll spend the next few minutes to give you an idea of these results from the regional advocacy uh, priority study that as Stephen mentioned, we distributed, uh, we did it in 20, in the middle of 2021 and we distributed in, in the summer. Um, so, but before doing this, I'd like to share a few important links and Stephen will help uh, sharing this in the chat as well. Uh, the first link is the main publication of the results. It's a, it's a big uh, report. It's around uh, uh, 75 pages. Um, um, this, this report, this, the full results include a lot of charts and uh, explanation text per chart. So here today, I will be just highlighting a few things drawn from this report. And also it's a, it's a, it's a good way to make you familiar with it. You won't need to keep any notes or make any screenshots because everything I'm gonna share with you today is already included in this uh, full results of the study. And the other two links are uh, initial analysis of um, responses that we did on uh, policy focus and on advocacy activities. So now let me share a few uh, data, first in terms of uh, the survey engagements across the regions. So here are the acronyms I mentioned earlier. Uh, so um, AO is for Asia Oceania, EU is for Europe, LAC, Latin America and the Caribbean, MINA is the Middle East and North Africa, North, NA is North America, and SSA will be Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, please bear with me if I'm going to um, pronounce these acronyms instead of the whole uh, name. 
Um, so overall, we received in total 384 usable answers with an identified country of origin. And responses came from 102 countries. Uh, in this pie chart, you see the distribution of answers per region. So out of these responses, we see that the Asia Oceania had the most ones uh, with 92. Uh, and then uh, Europe and LAC uh, regions follow with uh, 78 respondents. And North America comes next with 55, then MENA with 45, and then uh, SSA with 33 respondents. Here is also a map. Um, so you see here the responses were received from which countries. So if everyone, if anyone from you here contributed to the report, to the study, um, I'd li we'd like to congratulate you on that. Uh, and also I'd like to invite everyone to look into the detailed report. So to see which countries from your region are missing. Uh, in the report, there is a full list of countries um, and also the responses per country. So it would look like this. Of course, there are more countries to follow. Uh, but please look at this um, because this might be an indicator if you know if there might be more effort needed in your country or in any missing countries. Um, so in the report, we in the survey, uh, excuse me, we asked respondents to set out um, whether they were answering on behalf of a library association or a library institution or rather as an individual, and then to say if they were answering on behalf of a library association or an institution to say um, the size of it. So if it was a small, medium or large one. Uh, this allowed us to get an idea not only between regions, but also between associations and institutions and between larger, medium and smaller players in the field. In terms of substance, um, so no, no, so he, sorry. Uh, yeah, so here we see actually the distribution in terms of this uh, of the type of respondents. So most responses came from individuals and, and, um, and institutions. Um, and here we see the, the picture per region, uh, which is kind of interesting because we, we see that we had more associations actually than institutions answering the survey in Europe and LAC regions. Uh, while in the other regions, we had more institutions than associations. Of course, as we mentioned, uh, the biggest part came from individuals. So let's go to the substance now. We asked three basic questions uh, about these three topics. Uh, levels of focus on financial support for different library types, levels of focus on different library policy issues, and uh, levels of engagement in different library advocacy activities. I'm going to show you a few results per question. So here is the first question we asked them. So exactly was this one, which of the following do you see as thematic priorities for advocacy in your country? That was a multiple choice question. Uh, and the, the answers were ensuring stronger financial support for <clears throat> public or national or school, academic research or other types of libraries. Um, <clears throat> so we asked respondents to ascribe a level of priority to each of those answers. And here you see the results. Um, so in the Y uh, axis, the vertical one, uh, the vertical axis, one means not at all a priority and five means essential. So you see this at the left bottom corner of what each number stands for. So the results really, this could indicate areas where there may be scope for the regional divisions to partner with FLS sections as well, representing specific library types in order to identify actions for projects. Um, of course, the results here are likely to be shaped by the background of the people responding to. So the global view of the answers to the first question, which is what you're seeing right now on your screens, um, is that public libraries are number one priority in all regions, except for um, the SSA, the Sub-Saharan Africa region, where school libraries are number one. And then national libraries, we see that come a close behind as a priority in AO, MENA and LAC and SSA regions and academic libraries scored highest in relative terms in Asia, Oceania, and Sub-Saharan Africa. This is the global view of association respondents answers to, so this is the, the, the answers only from associations for the first question again. So associations of all sizes in all regions count public libraries as a top priority again, and school libraries are considered as very important for associations of all types as well, taking the second place. 
So however, however, there is disagreement on the third thematic priority as um, we see that small associations considered national libraries uh, as the third most important priority and big associations consider school libraries and academic and research libraries as their third most important priority. Interestingly, these are the, the responses of associations uh, respondents um, only in the Asia Oceania region. Um, you see here we have um, we have two columns per, per type because we uh, had no responses from medium associations in the Asia Oceania region. So that's why you see in the chart the answers from only small and big library associations in Asia Oceania. Interestingly, um, the small library associations in the region of Asia Oceania consider ensuring financial support for public libraries as their top priority, while the bigger ones uh, consider public libraries um, as their last priority. Um, while school libraries are one of the top priorities for big associations, they are the last priority for small library associations, like a mirror, it's like um, totally different. And this is a similar view of, of the answers from associations in, in the European region. So there's here, there seems to be a general consensus for the priorities along all sizes of library associations. All consider public libraries as their top priority. And small associations consider that other types need more attention in terms of financial supporting, while medium and big associations think that school libraries and academic and research libraries came as a second and third priority in, in Europe. This was the first question. Let's now go to the second question, which was uh, this is that you see on your screens. Which of the following issues do you see as thematic priorities for advocacy in your country um, other than financial support? So um, this was again a multiple choice question and actually we gave them again some themes. And this actually question aimed to look beyond pure questions around money and think rather about the wider landscape of government actions that involve or affect libraries. And here you see the global view of the answers. So the, 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 you see the themes that we gave them underneath. Um, and again, it's the one means not at all priority and five means essential. Um, so the results. Digital inclusion and connectivity are the biggest priorities for three regions, um, North America, Asia, Oceania, and Europe. Library laws are first and foremost, interestingly, in both MENA and LAC regions, uh, but they are a low priority in North America, for example. Uh, literacy and reading are the top priorities in, in uh, the SSA region and score relatively highly elsewhere too. These indicate potential priority areas for action in individual regions. Um, and copyright and open access matters. Uh, this is what OA means there. Matters are of high priority in all of NA, MENA, and Europe regions. And of course, issues like heritage and culture are consistently of medium and high priorities in all regions. And this does suggest a potential, at least for experience sharing between regions. Um, these for us were very interesting results, uh, uh, just to give you also an insight, the global views of the answers. And here is the global view of the answers from associations. So the results here show the different policy um, areas other than funding on which associations focus their advocacy. So while big library associations in all regions count copyright and open access as their biggest priority, this issue seems to stand out less among small and medium library associations. And the same happens with library laws that are considered of major importance for small associations, but only come in the middle of the pack for medium and big ones. Um, other issues such as legal deposits generally receive less focus, but this may be because of the relatively narrow nature of this, uh, of this area. Here we see the answer of associations only for Europe. Um, so we see that medium associations, library associations in Europe, um, seem to have set library staff matters as the highest priority. Also with education, lifelong learning, digital inclusion, connectivity, and social inclusion coming up equally as next priorities. And then big library associations in Europe seem to consider copyright and open access as their most important matter to focus their advocacy on, 
with also education, lifelong learning, digital inclusion, connectivity, and the legal deposit coming up equally as next priorities. And then the small library associations in Europe consider library laws as the most important issue for advocacy in the region. Uh, with library staff matters and literacy and reading coming up as next priorities. So here we see that a few issues are coming up to the surface, but of course more discussion is needed to conclude to the matters. Uh, so which the, the regional division of Europe should focus their work on. Let's see now the picture of, uh, so what the, what the answer to the second question looks from an institutional point of view. So this is the global view from all institutions, uh, from all regions, but it, from different type, size type of institutions. So what we see is that there is a general consensus among uh, institutions of all sizes, according to which all of them consider digital inclusion, connectivity, and uh, copyright and open access as their top priorities. That's really interesting. Hmm? There's something interesting that all institutions could use as their, um, as their uh, advocacy arguments. And here we see the institutional respondents answer uh, to the second question only for the Asia Oceania region. Um, so we see that digital inclusion and connectivity are consistently of high priority for medium and large association uh, institutions, excuse me. Um, and there is more variation for others. It tends to be smaller institutions that think most about staffing and copyright while larger institutions look at copyright too, but additionally to education and lifelong learning and social inclusion. So, and this is the, the third and last question we asked them, and it was about uh, current advocacy activities that are carried out around the world. So the question was, what sort of activities are you carrying out in your association or institution, or if they were answering as an individual, more broadly in your national library field? Um, again, uh, it was a multiple choice question. Um, it's just here that on the Y, the vertical axis, you see that one means now not at all active and five means very active. Um, so what is interesting here is to look really at the lower scores as areas where more work might be needed, potentially to be supported by our new regional division committees. So more contact with legislators, and scheduling more meetings with government officials to talk about libraries could be seen as needed in all regions, as we see that these are low everywhere, and particularly in Asia Oceania and LAC. That's really interesting. Uh, in EU, we see the same issue, but additionally, we see that more work might be needed in evaluating the impact of advocacy work. Uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa and Middle East and North Africa regions, we see that the scores for actions like meeting regularly with government officials, making contact with legislators, and evaluating the impact work of libraries are similarly low. Uh, additionally, in the MENA region, more work might be needed in designating individuals focused on advocacy, while North American respondents noted that they are quite active in this field. So, we might think that there could be a knowledge exchange opportunity uh, in this area. Looking around the world, uh, we can see really strong focus on lobbying type activities in Europe and North America, uh, more on communication type activities in LUC, uh, MENA and SSA, and really a mix of these two in Asia Oceania. Let's now see the next slide in this the global view of the um, association's answers to the third question. So again, let's look at the lower scores. So creating contacts with legislator is again the, something that all associations, no matter their size, uh, may need to work more or as it's very low. Um, although larger and medium associations do have a strong focus on understanding laws and getting to know officials. Um, small library associations around the world seem to be more active in mobilizing their members as advocates compared to medium and big library associations. That's interestingly, uh, each association type seems to be very active in different thematic areas. Uh, so small associations, for example, are very active in partnerships. Uh, medium associations seem active in contacts with government officials and big associations seem to be very active in understanding laws and policies. And let's now go to our last two slides. Um, the first one here is the, the responses from associations only for the Asia Oceania region. 
Um, as I already mentioned, we had no responses from medium uh, associations in the in this region in Nigeria. So therefore, you see here answers from only small and big associations. So let's again look at the lower scores, and we have here both small and big lab associations um, could need improvement in creating contacts with legislators, as this is the lowest score in both, as of course globally as well as we mentioned. Uh, Interest, interestingly, big library associations uh, in the Asia Oceania region are more active in partnerships than smaller ones, and they both seem to have staff at least named individuals focused on advocacy. Um, and this is the same view. Uh, so there is the responses from associations, but only in the, Euro the European only perspective. So interestingly here, medium and big library associations in Europe have scored the thematic area of having members as advocates as their lowest score. Um, while smaller associations do, seem to be quite active in this area. This is something that we also noticed globally as well. Um, so there is an interesting potential here for smaller library associations to share their knowledge with medium and big library association in this area of work. And on a similar track, Medium library associations in Europe seem to be less active in creating contacts with legislators, while small and big associations seem to be more active in this area. So thank you really for your attention. Um, and we'll move on to the Q&A in a minute. Uh, before that, I should add that if you're interested in engaging further with our new re uh, regional divisions and in these conversations to look at our website, follow the work of our regional division committees. Here are the web pages of every regional division committee. And my, my, my colleague, Stephen, will help uh, putting this in the chat as well, or if he hasn't done it already. And um, depending also on where you live or where your, your work interests are, uh, you are really welcome to join any open mailing list of those regional division committees. This is a way to get informed about their work and how to, to get involved. Um, and just before opening the floor, um, I wanted to give the floor actually to Stephen to, share, to say a few words about how to use these results that I presented to you just now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thespina. And I think as Thespina said at the beginning, this is supposed to be, it's a conversation starter. And um, clearly responses from 384 library areas, library associations, library institutions and librarians around the world is far from being absolutely everyone. Um, <clears throat> however, what we hope this can do, both in terms of looking at the results themselves, but also thinking about the process and how you can apply the process, that this could be something useful for you in terms of reflecting on where you're focusing. So we've got a, a, a few ideas of things you could do with these results in order to support reflection internally. So first of all, is simply use the questions, you, you use the questions that we went through to assess yourself and your situation. So where would you place your priorities in terms of library types, in terms of policy areas, in terms of types of advocacy activity? How would you compare to others in, in the region? How would you compare to associations? How do you compare to bigger associations or whatever? So there's an opportunity, and, and then think, you know, if you've got a different response to the average, is there a reason for that? Has that been a conscious choice? Does it respond to need? Secondly, look for gaps. So you have your self-assessment. If you've looked at, at where you stand in comparison and you're thinking, you look at the landscape you, fo you face, the policy situation, the situation of libraries, and think, I don't know, are there gaps? Are there issues which in reality you realize are a really big priority? Are there activities that would be really useful that you're not doing as much as you, as you might be? So it's an opportunity then to think about where are those gaps and then you can think about how to fill them. I think there's an interesting question in there about the right balance of advocacy activities because the ideas we've suggested here are, are very much based on IFLA's advocacy capacities grid. Um, and this is based on the idea that across the board, there's a range of activities needed, that advocacy is a spectrum that goes all the way from traditional lobbying, so knowing the minister, knowing the senior official, getting friendly with them, knowing their children's names and things like that. It's got to go from that right to much more public communication. So on social media, trying to 
ensure that the general public understands libraries, supports libraries, is ready to act for libraries. Now, action in different areas will be different. For example, there'll be some areas which are more policy focused. So for example, around copyright issues, where there may be less scope for public mobilization, as the public isn't particularly interested in copyright all the time, but you need to lobby a lot more. However, there'll be other areas, for example, around library funding, where you may need a much wider range of actions, where you really do need to mobilize the public in order to persuade decision makers. So think looking at the balance of actions you're taking and whether these match the, fun the, the goal you're aiming for is important. Um, on this basis, prioritize your development. So look at where there are gaps, look at where you increase your level of activity and think about, well, how do I do that? How do we gain the skills? How do we find the people with the skills? You don't need to do everything yourself. How do you find the people who have the skills, the knowledge, who find it easier to do these things than maybe you need to? Not everyone needs to be amazing at social media. Not everyone needs to be a designer. Not everyone needs to be a great writer, a great public speaker. Not everyone needs to be able to read a law. What's important is to be able to find a team that can do this. And so finally, lessons, finding that team, but also learning from others. And as the Spina said, certainly something we are hoping to do with our new regional division committees is to encourage them, is to support them, to provide this space, to help people in a region who are good at engaging with legislators, who are good at evaluating the impact of advocacy and helping them to take their lessons of this work and share them with others so that everyone can really improve their performance here. So with that, as the Serena said, I think we'd like to, to move over to questions and answers. Um, now, we have the questions and answers button on the screen. I'm sure you're all familiar with Zoom. We also have the chat function. And so I'd very much encourage you, if you have questions, to put them in, in there. Um, let's move to the final screen, the spinner. And... We'll move on to uh, we'll move on to the next screen. Oh, oh yeah, the the final screen. <laughs> We're going backwards, not forwards. There we go. And so simply yes, if you have any questions, please do ask them now. If not, I know we've got one or two ones that are prepared that we can work with. Sorry for the roller coaster here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can take down the slide and then. I was taking down the slide so we can see each other. So, okay, I think while we're waiting, if anyone actually has any ideas, um, <clears throat> in the meanwhile, we'll give you a little bit of time to actually to, 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 to provide them, to feed them in. Um, so, Despina, I think a question to you is, is, is how did this, how did the survey results, do you think, so far, how have they informed the preparation of action plans at the regional level within IFLA? So actually this, uh, as this work is now, it's all now almost Christmas uh, time. So we've been preparing this since spring 2021. And um, as, as maybe our friends here know, the original division committee started in uh, just after uh, the first virtual WIC. So, and then uh, we had the results ready. We, we presented, we did uh, some customized really reports for each region. And uh, we presented this to their um, committee meetings. So this, is, this was just even from the very first things that we did with them. We wanted them to just uh, get on board with something really practical in their hands. Um, and then this, I think, really shaped their discussions because, you know, they have been thinking of what actions they will do in their regions, where to focus. Um, and for example, in, in, in some regions, I cannot say many things, uh, can I, Stephen, because they will be published, published soon. But um, for example, in, in some regions, they really wanted to focus on copyright. And this was something that really evident from the report. 
And they had really, you know, they said, okay, this was also from the report, so we need to focus on, and that was a really good argument for their discussions. And even they uh, also for collaboration between the regional divisions, uh, this was something that came up, uh, not only from their action plans, but also from this report, because they, they saw, for example, that North Americans are very good in, in, in advocating with, with government officials and while others were not. And so, you know, they, they said, okay, maybe we can collaborate with them to share knowledge and get their knowledge and, and stuff like that. So this has happened across many, many themes and across many regions. Thank you. Yes, and I, I think that, that that's exactly it. I think it's provided some useful steer, and hopefully we'll see greater support and 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 especially in particular people making use of the opportunities that IFLA provides to do things together to actually pool resources and pool ideas to provide support more efficiently. And um, I've seen Pascal in the chat. Thank you so much. You're, you're completely right that yes, we presented a lot of data very quickly there. So it's understandable that, that you may need to sort of have more time in order to ask questions. Um, I'm just putting up. Stephen, you're muted now. I don't know, suddenly this so, That's it. Um, so I've just put up our email addresses again in, in the chat in case people have questions in writing once you've had the opportunity to look through the report in a little bit more depth. Um, are there any other questions? I know we've got one or two more prepared just in case. Okay. Um, Visveen, did you have a question at all? I'm muted, okay. Uh, actually, I had a question to you, Stephen, maybe uh, because you have so much experience on advocacy and you know you, you really have a a mind that can you know synchronize things and so what what do you see as the most interesting findings from this report what is really your your, your you know the diamonds from from this study <laughs> so i think I'll, I'll talk about two things actually i found it really interesting um the the differences between firstly the, the differences between regions and really sort of underlining that we're all advocating for libraries but there are different ways there are different tools that we need in order to be able to do our jobs and so realizing that that where we're focusing can depend you know, again without claiming that these results are sort of scientific but the suggestion that the level of, of development overall of the region may actually have an impact on where libraries are focusing or i know when i say development is not purely economic is there, there are other factors in there but so for example in <clears throat> regions with a, a higher share of developed countries, and in particular with a higher share of digitization, of society, of the economy, of skills, of education, there was really that focus on digital inclusion, that this was seen as the, 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 the really important thing that had to be worked on. And that, that, I suppose that makes sense because we think about a lot of our library advocacy at the moment, it is about making sure that we have the resources to provide skills, to provide access, to provide content to people. Whereas elsewhere, it was still, there was still the need to make sure that libraries themselves have that clear place in law, that they're recognized as being partners, that they need the library laws. And then of course in Africa, which it was almost encouraging to see this, Africa sadly still has the lowest, has the, uh, a large number of countries with very low literacy rates. And so it was really encouraging to see that libraries were responding to that, that libraries saw this, that they realized that they acknowledged the importance of building literacy as this really just core primary function of so much other elements, so many other elements of, de of development, because it is. <clears throat> and so those differences between regions were interesting. The differences between big and small were interesting. I think there's an interesting question there about is it bigger associations that have a greater capacity to engage in more technical issues, those that require specific expertise, where smaller associations, unless they're, they're very specialized, will tend to focus on, on broader issues, issues that can really mobilize people, issues about which it may be easier to just engage people without having so much technical expertise. That was interesting. That was also evident because, sorry, because uh, the smaller associations, we saw that they were counting more on their members as advocates rather than the biggest associations. So that was really interesting. 
I, I, I think so. And that's actually, there's an interesting question in there as well. And um, that a lot of the time th th there can be a risk, I guess, with larger associations that if you have dedicated staff and dedicated people working on advocacy, this can reduce the need for others to get involved. And that's not the case. But it's understandable that it can be seen that well, we have a team in the capital, we have these half dozen people who are really engaged, so I don't need to do advocacy. And what was interesting is obviously in smaller associations, you don't have that so much, so everyone has to get involved. In larger associations, it's easier to have people who specialise, but how then can we make sure that individual librarians are also getting really active? So there's an interesting question there, because of course you need both. Mm -hmm. Again, as, as I said at the beginning, advocacy is a spectrum that goes from lobbying on the one side, so where you do need specialised people, you need regular contacts, you need to build up relationships, but the power of libraries is in the fact that we are present across countries, that we are legitimate because we are everywhere and because we should be able to have a voice everywhere. Mm -hmm. Co-ownership, huh? Yeah, no, exactly. It, it has to be a combined thing, a coordinated strategy. I guess that the final thing I'll say is I was really encouraged by how much of a focus there was on partnerships. And I think that's that's a really significant thing. That's a really important thing that sometimes we don't talk so much about, but in the end, libraries are such obvious partners for so many other organizations. We're an obvious partner for anyone who cares about education and literacy, anyone who cares about digital inclusion, anyone who cares about civic engagement. All of these things are naturally really strong areas for libraries. And so building up partnerships, making sure that we're getting other organizations to advocate for us is a really encouraging sign here. Okay, so let's give another we couple We have of one more question here. Go on. Um, what will be the next action post? The result of the survey. Thank you for the question, Camille. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, see, thank you for the question there. Um, so, one of the actions is simply what's already happening in the context of our regional division committee. So, taking the results that we have here, taking the, 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 the insights that we have, and turning these into practical action plans. And I think over the next months, we'll start to see some really concrete things coming out. So, for example, looking at how do we raise awareness around advocacy in general? How do we provide support, provide training on some of these individual areas, in particular those individual areas of advocacy activity? So can we share examples of great practice in impact evaluation? Can we share examples of great practice in communicating the impact of libraries or with engaging with legislators. So that's the next thing. I think we will need to think, potentially this is a survey that we can run again in the future. Hopefully we can get many more responses and so really start to get a, a more representative idea of what's going on in the world. And of course, one of the big next steps is simply, it, it's, it's what you do with it. It's, what you it's how you can take these results. I know of at least one country where they've taken the set of questions that we asked and have carried out this activity internally, getting people to think about, well, what matters in terms of institutions? What matters in terms of policy areas? What are we doing about it? And what could we change about it? So I think that's a key thing. Okay, and we've got this one comment in the chat about being able to see who's been commenting in the chat. I think hopefully the chat should be sharing everything that's been shared with everyone. And it's a webinar, so with webinars, we don't tend to list, the, the webinars don't show the list of participants for privacy reasons. So that's why you won't see the list of participants here. Okay, so I think we, we only planned this one for 45 minutes, and, and, and so we, we won't uh, force us to run longer than it needs to. Um, we are holding a, a second edition of the same webinar at 1 p.m. Universal time, so that's uh, 2 p.m. Central European time, 
a little bit more focus on our colleagues in North America, Latin America, and the Caribbean. So it'll be the same content, but of course, if there may be additional questions, we may be able to offer additional insights, I hope. Um, but with that, I said, um, we will put this recording up on the IFRA's YouTube channel. We will publicize that via social media. And we will also obviously share the links once again to the report so that you have a little bit more time to look through what is an incredibly sort of rich data source, which is a really incredibly rich source of ideas just for being reflective about the way we're doing advocacy. So with that, I wanted to say thank you very much to the Spina for, for the work, for the presentation. Thank you very much to all of you for being here today. And please be in touch. Please keep on engaging. Please keep on helping us ensuring that we're giving the best possible support to the library field in your advocacy for the right laws, for the right policies for libraries. With that, thank you very much and have a good rest of the day. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.